most people in life are looking for how to make a life worth living and retirement with having. What we do know is that life balance creates a happy life. What we do know is that life balance opens us up to all kinds of relationships in life. The primary function of life balance is to put in order how we should sort of schedule and plan our life. Faith is essential to most people. Faith allows people to heal faster. Faith allows people to get through difficult situations. And faith is something that so many people miss out on. Faith is something that I'm fond of. Reading about religious things, reading religious authors, I love doing that in my free time. I don't have the ability to do that right now. I personally don't have exactly the patience, but I don't have a comfortable place to sit to do that. If it was me, I'd be putting myself snuggled in my bed <coughs> or sitting on one of my comfy couch chairs, and I'd be sitting reading, and I'd be enjoying that. But at this time of life, I don't have a lot of time to do that. So I practice my faith with fervor. I literally use a faith bob in every decision. If you're in trouble with God, if you've pissed off the house of the Lord, you need to find a way to get yourself back to God. Back to God is not really a title that I talk about because the presumption is that you are out of the house of the Lord. And most people actually today, I believe, are. But it doesn't mean that God's not watching your life. It just may mean that he is not participating as fully as you could allow him to. You know, because he does give us free will. And free will says, I'm going to choose for me what's right for me. But sometimes we choose what's right for us and discover a little later, it is nowhere close to right for me. Because you didn't think about how it would impact your family. You didn't think about how it would impact your events. You didn't think about how it would impact your business. You didn't think how it would impact your profession. You didn't think how it would impact your kids. You didn't think how it would impact your Thanksgivings and your Christmas. You didn't think about how a person who is great to get you into bed is going to be in the day-to-day -day of living, that they're not going to be the same person. People who court people are not the same people who wed people. And we know that. There's a funny thing that says in on a YouTube video I watched recently that was really hilarious and really righteous. And it basically said, if you never want to have sex again, don't get married. Or get married. I Sorry, I, I monkeyed it up. If you never want to have sex again, get married. And it's sort of funny because people presume that when you're out on dates, that the player is putting everything out there that they really are. They're not. They're putting everything out there that they can to make you intrigued, enticed, and interested in going to bed with them. And somebody who could be really hot, that you really want to do things with in a sexual way, might be the worst kind of father, the worst kind of marriage bed, the partner, the worst kind of business person, the worst kind of everything. And that's a player. In life, we have to know who's in the player mode and who's in the marriage mode. There are the marrying types and there are the non-marrying types. And if you're not a marrying type, you probably lied to yourself. You probably just never found the right person because you're not listening to God. In life, we have to be willing to tell the Lord what we're looking for in our marriage bed. If it's our first marriage, we have to tell God what we're after. And I did that in some very profound prayers. And as a result, almost a week later, I met those people. I was literally on my knees, practically in tears, losing my life partner of many years, and openly it was hard. But at the same time, I recognized and I acknowledged that if God had this plan for me to do it this way, that I had to acknowledge to the Lord and say, if this is what you want for my life, Lord, I allow it. And I just ask you to do it in a way that nobody gets hurt. And that was part of my prayer. But at the same time, I was praying for the right person to enter my life. And immediately that happened with two marvelous people. One right after the other because the prayers were a part of those situations. Now, in life, we have moments of time to tell God what we're after, what we're looking for. But I remember on the one who is the one, according to God, with the 10,000 plus signs I've now seen over the course of 8 to 10 years, that openly I said, I want the one to be able to teach me things and help me in business. And that's what I said. And in both situations of both soulmates and, and twin flames and life partners that came into my life, who got monkeyed by people outside of our relationship, both of them met all the criteria I asked for from God.